Now, in the products typically we have seen the four P's, product, price, place, promotion and couple of people add a couple of things. But today, if you are looking at services, it is vital to look at three more important P's. One is the people element, which is far more significant in the case of services. Second is processes, because one needs to ensure a certain degree of standardization across, you know, what is considered a very variable aspect. You know, the variability of services, as we notice, is a very distinguishing characteristic. And the third is, can we provide some physical evidence, so that it gives people a little more comfort. Example, like in massage, you know, better kinds of oils, certifications, good place, air conditioning, music, some physical evidence to show you that what I am providing by way of service has got more credibility. So, in short, we are going far beyond the four P's and it is vital for us as marketers to understand this critical distinction. Let us take each thing, people. As we have seen before, in the examples I have talked about, like the Eureka Forbes thing or a computer, well-trained people, whether it is your own people or your franchisees or your associates or you know, business channel partners, it is important that their staff and the customers and, and the intermediaries are all kind of interwoven into the service because that is what determines whether what is finally received as output is favorably perceived or not, there is satisfaction. So, every staff member in a service environment is in some way or the other a marketer, whether he is a full time or a part time marketer, because every interaction with a staffer is really a moment of truth, like the Scandinavian Airlines chief mentioned famously in his book. It is a moment of truth between the organization and the customer. Therefore, it can be very highly variable. Therefore, the people element is critical and service oriented organizations who manage the people element better how you will find are more competitive and highly regarded as opposed to their counterparts. Second thing, because of the high nature of variability, the perishability and the lack of standardization of the service, it is important to have processes so that one can scale as one goes along and ensure a certain kind of standardized in to some extent or large extent service for different customers over different points in time in different regions. So, these processes may not be so vital for goods and physical goods, but very vital for services. And there are various ways to do it, creating kinds of blueprints, guidelines, process manuals, so on and so forth. Some people also go one step further. There are certain sub steps within each service or processes, and they try to de skill it, that is, make it less and less people dependent. You will see this today happening, for example, if you take uh, uh, ticket booking and you can do it online. It substantially takes away the variability in terms of different ticket clerks at the railway station. That is a very simple example of showing you how one can de-skill certain processes. Physical evidence. Many times people are very worried whether, you know, like I mentioned in the massage case or a health care space, does this man who is sitting in front of me have the qualification? Is he the right guy to do this service? Really, is he a quack, for example, if he is a doctor or is he a real practitioner? So, what doctors can do is to show their qualifications at the back or they can show the recommendations or recognitions they have received, the kind of front office that they have, the kind of other things and paraphernalia that they show. Many doctors today really do not have to wear the stethoscope around their uh, neck or have a white coat, but by putting that white coat and a stethoscope, it makes the patient feel that he is a doctor, a professional. Touching the patient also many times doctors need not do because the reports already tell them a lot of what the problem is, but they do it just to reassure the patient. So, is there physical ways by which you can communicate the way you are delivering the service is the way the customer expects it to be. So, it gives some indication of the service. So, importance of building staff uniforms or brochures or other things can really help in ensuring that you are providing you know, service better. Apart from the marketing mix, a very important aspect in services marketing is measuring service quality. And for this, we have a very, very, very interesting scale, a very interesting model really. The Rater model developed by three people, Parashuraman, Zaitamal and Berry. Now, they created a very composite kind of a model involving 10 parameters 
which was then folded into five parameters and it is therefore known as the Rater scale for short, each letter in Rater standing for something. The first R which is the very important R is the issue of reliability and I think all of us who have experienced ourselves as users of service know how important it is to have a service provider or a provision of a service that is always reliable and consistent. You know, a person who does it nicely in a manner that is on time and all that. The second thing is in terms of assurance. Now, assurance is one parameter which has four other facets folded into it. Those constitute competence, courtesy, credibility and security which means the customer when he or she is using that service or as a consumer of that service is assured of certain key aspects during the provision of that service which is why all these things that there should be a certain amount of courteousness, a courtesy shown by the service provider that it should be done in a very secure and safe way and that there is a credibility be attached behind the person who is doing it and that person or the persons who are executing the job have the competence to actually do it. The third thing is the tangibles aspect. We have already seen earlier that there is a need to have physical evidence. The more one has physical evidence wrapped around the provision of the service, it kind of lends itself to, the, uh, to a better experience for the user of the service. The fourth very important thing is the a feeling of empathy that is demonstrated and again this is a combination of three separate facets. One is access that is I am able to access those who are responsible or those who have the authority to ensure the proper delivery of the service. Second appropriate and complete kind of communication. I think many of us who have used various kinds of travel services example airlines sometimes find it very frustrating when we do not know the reasons why our flight is being delayed. And the third thing is the understanding of the consumer. If something does go wrong, how do the people on the ground in key levels actually you know, understand what is happening with the consumer, why it is so vital for the consumer and does something about it. And finally, which is what we are coming to the does something about it part, which is the responsiveness. How responsive are people, how willing are they to do things for you to make sure that your experience of that service is great. Now, what happens therefore when you have something like service quality is there are so several gaps that are possible and these gaps really are the difference between various aspects. For example, a certain expectation is there from the customer when he or she for example goes to a hotel or to an airline, he expects a certain kind of service. That expectation is a result of three things, word of mouth communication, personal needs and past experience typically which leads him to have a certain expectation. Now what happens is the way the, the, the company really has a perception of that expectation could be completely different from how the customer really perceives it and that leads to the first major gap. Okay? The second thing is between what the customer expects of his service, I mean what the management expects of the service expectation of what the customer expects as the service, I am sorry, and how it translates into specifications. Now, that could again be a gap over there. That is here is gap 2. The third thing is between the specification and the actual delivery between uh, the expectation, between the specification and the delivery, there could be a gap and that is gap number 3. Now, the fourth gap is what really is the delivery that is happening on the ground and what is actually the communication to the customer. A very good example would be pizza delivery. Now, what happens is there are many pizza companies who say delivery in 30 minutes, 40 minutes or free. But typically what happens is that the, while the communication to the customer is 40 minutes, many times going to various conditions, traffic, issues, whatever, there is actually a delivery which happens perhaps in 50 minutes or 60, I mean 60 minutes or something like that. Now, if this happens consistently, obviously there is a clear dissonance and that is a big gap and if the customer at least gets the pizza free, it is okay, but many times there seems to be some issues here and there. And finally, there is also the gap between uh, the perceived service as seen by the customer and what he expects. So, that is the final gap. So, as you can make out for a marketer, when he is tackling the delivery of services and the provision of services, he has to be very mindful of various things that happen between 
management of the company on the one side and the customer on the other side and the people or the, the intermediaries or the intervening steps in between. Now what happens is all of them have a critical role to play. So as you can make out, it is not as simple and straightforward as it looks like and especially for larger organizations, for example, like hospitality chains or travel companies or even the Indian railways, there's so many things you would have found as a personal user of those services, you would have found so many you know, gaps and maybe deficiencies or what have you. So in conclusion, what we have realized is services today are a very important part of any economy. They are constitute the bulk, in fact, of most Western economies and constitute even a huge chunk of the Indian economy, the largest in fact. So what happens is that for a marketer, this is a very vital area that he cannot ignore. Secondly, we need to go beyond the four Ps in the case of services and we have seen enough and more of that in this. And finally, the aspect of service quality needs to be very, very clearly understood because as we have seen, there are several gaps between expectations of customers and how management perceives it and how it delivers it.